Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Olivia and I've been a type one diabetic for over 20 years. And in that 20 years, I have done my best to make living with diabetes more enjoyable and more sustainable. And I come here onto YouTube to help other diabetics do the same. And today I'm going to be doing a very helpful video. I think that most would find very helpful. And I'm going to be replacing with you guys, my Dexcom and my Omnipod 5. Now I use the Dexcom G7 and I per right now, have both of those on my leg, but I'm going to be taking them off and putting them on my arm. And I'm going to do step-by-step -step instructions with my phone of how I do that and replace both of these. So we're going to get started with Omnipod 5 first and foremost. And first, before I get started on that, I'm going to log into my phone. And for instance, just so you know, Omnipod 5 needs to be changed every three days. So today's my third day, is expired, and they give you a one hour grace period after it expires to replace it in time. And Dexcom, you have to change that every 10 days and they give you a 12 hour grace period. So actually my Dexcom expires in the middle of the night tonight, but I figured to make it easier, I'm just gonna change both of them out right now at once. So to start, I went into my Omnipod app. Now this is the newer iPhone app with Omnipod where I can control it through my iPhone, which has been absolutely fantastic for me. So to start, I'm gonna go into menu right there, which is that button right there. And you're gonna go into pod. And right at the bottom, you're gonna see in purple, it says change pod. So I'm going to click that and it's asking if I want to deactivate my pod. And the answer 100% of the time when you wanna change your pod out is yes. So deactivate pod. So you can see it's deactivating. You can also see me in the reflection right there. It takes a second. And I don't know if you heard that in the video, but when it's deactivated, it beeps. So I'm going to peel it off my leg and show you guys as proof that it is now off. And this is an old pod. And since it's deactivated, I don't have to worry about it interrupting the service with the new pod. That's why it's always really important that you deactivate this pod before putting a new one on. Because it's Bluetooth controlled, you don't want this old pod to interfere with your new one. So this is good. I'm good to just chuck that into my trash. So before even messing with Dexcom, I'm going to set up a new pod. So once you deactivate a pod, it's going to prompt you to set up a new one. So set up a new pod, and now it's going to prompt me to fill up my pod with insulin. So I'm going to open this up, and as a disclaimer, in case anyone is wonder wondering, I'm putting it on my left arm and I've already wiped that down with alcohol. Make sure that you put your pod and your sensor on a clean area. So that way you don't have to worry about infection. I also have my insulin right here. This is the vial of Novolog. I used to use the pens and recently have run through all my pens. So now I'm using the vials, which I must admit has been 100% easier. So to start, I'm going to fill up my pod with insulin. As a disclaimer, when you're filling them up, you have to put at least 85 units of medicine into each pod. So when you go through training, your doctor or whoever is training you should give you a good amount to start off with your pod. Since I am pregnant, I'm now in my second trimester, I am going through a lot more insulin than I typically do, and I put about 140 units in each pod every three days. So I'm going to measure that out into my syringe. So you can see, measuring out. I just think it's so fantastic that Omnipod comes with the syringe. When I first heard about this product, I really thought they were gonna try to get you and have you pay for the syringes and pay for all these different things. But the fact that the product comes with that and it's not an extra cost, I think has been a really fantastic pro to Omnipod. So if you're wondering, I just, if you're, if it's a question you've been wondering about starting the pod, the pod comes with a fancy little syringe. So that way you can inject the medicine in yourself. So no extra cost there. So now I'm going to fill up my pod. And once it's filled to the 85 units that's required, it will beep twice to let me know it's good. But I'm going to put all this medicine in despite it being more than 85. So you heard the two beeps and you can see right there, there's that little hole right there, there's an arrow pointing to it. That is where you are injecting the medicine. So this syringe is now done and I'm going to put onto my 
controller next. And now you're going to hear your pod click and do some work. It's going to prime your insulin and move it into the port so that way it can easily be administered through the pump. And it takes about a few minutes for that to do its thing. And for the time being, I do like to save the little information card at the front of each pod, just so that way if I have any issues with the pod, I can contact Omnipod 5 support and they will send me a replacement pod for free, which has been great. So I like to hold on to this just in case I do have any issues. But if you are curious, there is a way through the app that you can also get the information about the pod if you do run into any issues. So if you hear, it has like a clicking sound. So it's priming, it's getting good, it's communicating with pod, and you just wanna keep your controller and your phone together so that way it can communicate with one another. Whether you're using your controller or your phone, same rules apply. I just got rid of my controller, not by get rid of, I mean I put it into a drawer um, and moved over to using my iPhone as my controller and I have absolutely loved it. But for the most part, the functionality of both have been very similar. Um, I do have a video if you guys want to check it out on my pros and cons of using the phone. So far, most of my issues with this pod, most of my experiences with the pod have been pro with using it with my phone. It's just so much more convenient. So now it's going to give you some instructions. It's going to tell you to clean your site. Already did that. You're going to remove tab and check cannula and remove paper backing. So right here, if you're wondering, is the cannula they want you to remove. And to remove it, you're just going to snap it. So don't be afraid you're breaking it. It almost makes you feel like you are breaking it, but you're literally just snapping it. And then now you're going to peel the backing off. So your pod will look just like this, and this is sticky, so be sure not to touch it because you don't want it to stick. And you're going to put it wherever you want. So with the Omnipod placement, I try not to put it on my inner arm because that's where all my capillaries are. I have a lot of bleeding in there. So I try to stick on the outer arm I have less bleeding that way and it's less painful. I'm going to put it right there and I'm going to hit start. It, and it will ask you, is your pod securely in place? Yes, it is. I stuck it on, we are good to go. And once I hit yes, it is going to basically get ready to put the needle into me so that way I can get insulin through the pump. And if you're wondering if it hurts, it's just a pinch. Nothing worse than a regular shot. So yes, it is securely in place. Now it says communicating with pod. And as a little top tip, if you want, you can pinch the area. It kind of decreases the pain and also kind of gets your mind off of that pinch. So it did click and it went in. And now it's going to prompt me and ask me if, is, if the cannula is inserted properly. And yes, it is. And you can tell that by the little pink square. There's a square on the pod and when the cannula is in the correct way, it's more pink. And you can kind of see it right there. It's kind of hard to see with the lighting, but you can tell by seeing that pink in that square that it has been inserted correctly. So you're going to click yes. And then you want to switch to automated mode, which just means that your pump and your Dexcom are going to communicate hand in hand to make sure that you are getting the insulin that your body needs. So that is it for my Omnipod 5. So now we are going to do my Dexcom. And my Dexcom is also used through my phone. And then here I have my Dexcom right here. I'm gonna open this puppy up. So this is the Dexcom G7. And one thing I love about the Dexcom G7 is that the sensor and transmitter are all in one. This is both. So if you are familiar with the G6, you used to have to buy the transmitter and the sensor separately, but with the G7, you don't. It all comes in one, and that has been a huge money saver for me, and I have loved that. Also, very convenient. So I'm going to go into my Dexcom G7 app right here. You can see my sugar is 102 and steady, so that means my Omnipod 5 has been doing a great job. And I'm going to go into connections, and you can see right there, it says my sensor has 10 hours left and I'm going to hit replace sensor on the app. So replace, why are you stopping now? Um, best timing for me, there we go. And you're going to hit the red button at the bottom it says stop sensor. So now it's prompting me to remove my sensor. So I'm going to remove that 
and here we go. My sensor has now been removed. So now I'm free to toss this into the trash. And then, okay. So now it's going to prompt me to put up a new pod. One thing I've been doing recently is I've been scanning that QR code right there. It has just made things so much easier. Before I used to type in the code, it requires you to put in the four digit code at the top and then the code in the middle towards the bottom. It starts with a two one all of the time. So if you're choosing to do it that way, you can do that the four digits and then the code that starts with two one. But I've been doing it with the QR code because it's just been so much easier because all you have to do is just scan that code right there. So to show you, I'm going to hit use camera to scan code. Now, if you don't want to do it that way, you can hit can't scan and then it will prompt you to put those digits in. So I'm going to use my phone and just like that, it identified all the information it needs from the sensor and now it's just prompting me to put my sensor on. So. I'm going to be putting my sensor on next to my pod. So with your sensor and pod, you want them to communicate effectively. So they need to be in the same line of sight. So on the same side of your body. So I could put it on my left side or I could put it on, since this is kind of on the back of my arm, I could put it on my back. So my other back of my arm. However, I don't like running into risk of having them not be able to communicate. So I'd like to just put them right next to each other. So I'm going to put my pod right here. So pretty close. And with this, you just press it in. You can see right there, you're going to press it in. And then all you do is click that white button right there. Ready, set, go. There we go. Just like that. And then I have an overlay it comes to every sensor it comes with an overlay patch. I have my husband do this for me every time because he is just very good at it. I feel like when I try to put these on, I don't get it right and then it ends up falling off. So my husband just does it better for me. And it's on the back of my arm, so it's kind of hard to get, but you can see how the sensor looks next to the pod. So I'm going to click that my sensor is inserted. So... All right, so now it's searching for sensor right there. And it's going to ask me if I want to pair it through Bluetooth with my phone. And I wanna pair that so that way my Dexcom app will communicate with my Dexcom sensor. So it now says my sensor is paired and it will be warmed up in 26 minutes. That is another huge pro of the G7 is it only takes a 30 minute warm up period. The G6 was longer. I can't remember if it was one hour or two hours, but it was longer. This is only 30 minutes, which is next to no time. So now I just have to wait for that to warm up. But while that's doing that, I wanna get my pump set up with my new sensor because I want them to be able to communicate. So for that, I'm gonna go into menu. I'm going back into Omnipod 5, by the way, sorry. Going back to the Omnipod 5 app and I'm going into manage sensor, which is right there underneath pod. And I'm going to delete the pod that used to be associated with the pump. So I went down and I hit disconnect and it says cancel connecting sensor. Yes, cancel. So it's communicating with the pod to no longer communicate with that old sensor. And now it's telling me to add a new sensor. So I'm going to hit the blue button at the bottom, add new. And it's going to literally prompt me to do the same exact thing I just did with the Omnipod, with Dexcom and take a picture of that QR code. Or you can do what I just said and put those digits in. So I'm going to take a picture and it says communicating with pod and switch to automated mode. So just like that, my new sensor is now set up to my pod. Very easy, very simple. So my pod and my sensor are both kind of warming up and getting the groove and waiting to communicate with each other because obviously Dexcom and Omnipod cannot communicate together until the warm up period my sensor is through. So in about 30 minutes, I will be good to go and everything will be communicated and it will go from limited mode to automated mode because the only way your Omnipod 5 can be in automated mode is if it's communicating effectively with your sensor. So I hope you guys found that very helpful. I really do. And I hope that you guys, if you guys are just started with the pump or just started with the sensor, I hope you watched this video and 
got some tips on how to put them on effectively and maybe you're just getting started and you're just nervous about all the technology and all the newness and I hope watching this video showed you how seamless and easy it can be. Please help me and my channel out and give this video a big thumbs up. It helps me out. And I will, as usual, be bringing you guys more type 1 diabetic, OnPod 5, Dexcom content, just because I really love supporting the diabetic community. So I hope you guys have a beautiful, great day, and good luck on your diabetic journey, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.